Hi guys, so we return to the Stockton saga and newly minted Home Secretary James Cleverley's strange attempts to get it on the map. The insult to the constituency was raised once again by its MP Alex Cunningham. This time however James Cleverley was in the chamber, but the Home Secretary pretended once again that he was insulting the MP, not the people of the area he represents. Cleverly didn't apologise here either to the people or the MP, he apologised to Parliament, not for the insult, but for the language used, which he had originally denied. This is a clever parliamentary trick. But to make matters worse, the deputy leader of the House was as much used as Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the actual leader. Have a listen. Very much, Madam Deputy Speaker, and if I advised the respective offices of the members of this House, I would refer to in this point of order. It is extremely sad that the Home Secretary hasn't the guts to admit to his appalling remark made about my Stockton North constituency from the front bench and apologise to the people I have the privilege of representing. Yes. There was quite a chain of events last week. After I raised the matter on the floor of the House, the Home Secretary first denied he had said anything at all. The government then sent out the Tory party chairman, the honourable member from North West Durham, to tell the media that no words had been uttered from the Treasury bench. Next up, the Leader of the House, who said she had been told by the Home Secretary he didn't say anything, and she believed him. She didn't help matters by referring to Billington instead of Billingham. Clearly, he took them both for fools, as he later admitted his foul language, but tried to minimise the damage to his reputation by claiming his remark was aimed at me. Well, that's all right then, but it's untrue, and has been shown to be untrue, and my thanks go to the Mirror and other wizards out there who have proved that to be the case. I'm listening carefully to the Honourable Gentleman. Uh, he's used the word untrue. I think he could find another way of expressing that. Uh, I, I'm sure that he would not, he would not wish to say that. Uh... <laughs> well, what's untrue? That James Cleverly insulted the constituency? or that James Cleverly insulted the MP, or that James Cleverly denied that he insulted anyone. I, I don't know which part she has a problem with. Which, which part is untrue? Is it untrue that he lied, or is it untrue that he lied about the lie? <laughs> which part are we... I'm confused. Our right honourable member of this house had uttered something that was untrue. I, I, I think... I, I think... Or maybe it's that the place is a shithole. Is that what's untrue? You offered me a considerable challenge there, but uh, perhaps uh, the, the Home Secretary has misadvertently misled people across the country in relation to this particular matter. But this matters, Madam Deputy Speaker. People take notice. They take notice of the things that the Home Secretary says, and his talking down of Stockton and Teesside can have consequences. He may have whispered in your ear, Madam Deputy Speaker, but can you advise me, have you got any powers to order the Home Secretary to return to the dispatch box and apologise in on. person for insulting Stockton rather than hide behind the half-truths uttered on his behalf by an official? I thank the Honourable Gentleman uh, for his point of order. He will recall that I answered a similar point of order to him uh, last week when he raised uh, uh, one aspect of this matter and at that point I reminded all members of the need for good temper and moderation in <laughs> Once again this remember to be polite, remember to be kind to other MPs um, James Cleverly was not respecting that so what's the point of this guidance? There's no punishment James Cleverly can say what he wants Boris Johnson could say what he wanted it doesn't make any difference. You, there's no point raising the point that, well, people should respect each other if they don't. In the language they use in this chamber, the honourable gentleman asks me if I have power to require the Home Secretary to return to the chamber. I don't need such a power. The Home <laughs> Secretary has voluntarily returned to the chamber and if he would care to make a point of order further to that point of order, the chamber will hear him. Secretary of State. Further to that point of order, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, <clears throat> for the avoidance of doubt, the honourable gentleman accused me 
of making derogatory remarks about his constituency. And my response, my response in issue, uh, uh, issued uh, through uh, uh, my uh, office was that I did not, would not, and would never make such comments about his constituents. Uh, but you first denied that you made any comments at all. So why are you now saying that you did make comments? Which is it, James Cleverly? Because at the, at the original uh, response was, James Cleverly didn't say anything. <laughs> now you're saying, well, actually, I didn't insult your constituents. His constituency. When I, what I said was a comment about him. My, 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 my apology, my apology was for using unparliamentary uh, language. There we have it. See, the apology is about the language, not to the MP itself. So James Cleverly doesn't have the guts, doesn't have the respect to say, I'm sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry for the language I used. At, I'm sorry for insulting the MP. It was wrong of me to insult the MP. This MP is doing his job. We disagree on things politically. I disagree with him on a number of issues, but I have the respect for him because he's an MP. doesn't have to respect Alex Cunningham as a person, but he can at least respect him as an, as an MP. But James Cleverly isn't even doing that. He's just apologizing for the language. But I will make it absolutely clear, Madam Deputy Speaker, for the avoidance of doubt, with no ambiguity, I did not, would not. Then what are you calling me, sir? I'd call him a liar because that's what, exactly what he is. The, the Honourable Gentleman asked, the Honourable Gentleman asked for the Home Secretary to come back to the Chamber uh, to issue an apology. He's this is not an apology. <laughs> this, is, this is like saying, I'm sorry if you are offended. <laughs> this is not an apology. Is she, that, is she really that dumb or is she just, well... You know, we have to work it within the, con the constra constraints of Parliament. It's doing so, so it, it is not reason... Enough. So the Honourable Gentleman ought to hear what the Home Secretary has to say and not to shout from his sedentary position, please. Home Secretary. Madam, De Madam Deputy Speaker, I know what I said. I rejected the accusation that I criticised his constituency. My criticism, which I made from a sedentary position about the honourable gentleman, used inappropriate language, for which I apologise. Once again, he's apologising for the language, not for the insult. So, of course, this is a lie. He was insulting the constituency, but he's, he, he knows that he can't get away with that. So he's going to say, well, I'm just going to insult the MP. Because I can get away with that. Because if the Tories want to, you know, if they have councillors or if they want to run against this MP in the future, it, it doesn't, doesn't work very well for them if they're insulting the constituency. But I will not accept that my criticism was of his constituency because it was not. Then what are you saying, sir? W wouldn't it be great for um, <laughs> James Cleverly to repeat what he actually said? then we could understand whether it was an insult to the MP or an insult to the constituency. Because shithole is generally referring to a place, not a person. Or, or, or this, is, this is not a debate and the matter is now closed. The, honourable, the right honourable gentleman, the Home Secretary, has rightly come to the chamber he has apologised to the Honourable Gentleman. No, 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 no. He has not apologised to the Honourable Gentleman. He has apologised to Parliament. He has apologised for his language. He has not apologised to the MP. Have you not been listening? Now, obviously, she has been listening. And obviously, she knows exactly the trick that James Cleverly is playing. But she's powerless to do anything about it. An apology... To the MP. An apology was actually requested of the to the constituency. James Cleverly denied that he insulted the constituency and he apologised for his language, which he originally had denied. So James Cleverly should be apologising on two fronts. He should be apologising for the language used and he should be apologising for misleading Parliament. Well, actually not misleading Parliament because he didn't make the statement in Parliament. He made it outside Parliament. But he should be 
apologizing for misleading the public, but he's not going to do that. That is an apology which is rightly due to the honorable gentleman, and I, I, and I hope he will accept it. Point, 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 point. I, I, no, 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 I, no, I'm not taking... Or well, I will briefly listen to the honourable gentleman, but yes. I wish to close this matter. I don't actually require any apology uh, for uh, an insult against me because it didn't happen. But the fact is, even if they, even as you've just, well, you've just intimated that the Home Secretary has apologised to me, he has not apologised to me. He has not apologised to the people of my constituency. He has apologised for using unparliamentary language. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. The Honourable Gentleman, the Right Honourable Gentleman, has issued an apology. I require an apology for the use of unparliamentary language, and the Right Honourable Gentleman, the Home Secretary, has given that apology. It is my understanding that he has also apologised to the Honourable Gentleman. No, he hasn't, you friggin' idiot! <laughs> now she's been dishonest herself. Maybe she needs to apologise to Parliament. Because she's, it seems, misleading Parliament as well. Because he did not apologise to the MP. He apologised for his language in Parliament. That's all he did. He knew how he could get around this problem. Whether the Honourable Gentleman accepts it or not is a matter for him. I require an apology. The Home Secretary has issued that apology. And the matter is now closed. Of course it's closed because you don't want to talk about it anymore. Absolutely pathetic. At the beginning, I compared her to Sir Lindsay Hoyle. Pretty much the same thing. Useless. Absolutely useless. James Cleverly insults a constituency, denies it, then comes back to Parliament, lies about it, and then claims that he insulted the MP, which he didn't, and the, the Deputy Speaker of the House is, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> he apologised. I heard him say, uh, I apologise. That's enough for me. Absolutely pathetic. We've seen it before. MPs... Uh, ministers, the Prime Minister himself, can lie to Parliament and these people will do nothing about it. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.